Hi guys, it's Technicolor Dust. Today I'm doing a speed paint and tutorial for just how I've been generally doing my art for the past few months. This is the first speed paint video I've done in like two or three years. Not counting a one-off I did of Agent Cooper from Twin Peaks on my Instagram, but that's besides the point. Someone on my Instagram asked if I could do a tutorial for my art and I figured, mm, sure. Why not? Maybe I can film it to be less vomit inducing. I uh, have never been asked to do a tutorial for my own art before. Like I did that Neopets video one time, but like not one for my own personal art. So hopefully I do okay. Anyway, right now I'm just doing a sketch of John Archivist Sims from the Magnus Archives. I wanted to do a smaller drawing of John going, what did you say? in episode 165 because I was all over that scene. If you've seen my other social media, you know that TMA has been doll I've been posting recently. My friend got me into it while I was at school and my ADHD just decided to go ham. Normally I would also post some school assignments for at least a little bit of variety, but I don't think I'll be able to po but I don't think I'll be able to post those for yeah, at least a while stick around in the next few months to find out why? Side note since that shameless plug is over, if anyone is wondering, during filming my computer decided to crash because I'm convinced Photoshop is actually the 16th fear entity and thrives off the suffering of my computer. So luckily my footage wasn't corrupted somehow, so I took a screenshot of what I had and ended up sketching over it. So I'm just gonna wrap up this sketch after that little hiccup and move on to the line art. I'm probably not going to film too much of it because I'm really picky about how I do my line art, so I tend to zoom in and out a lot, and I know from past film experiences that that is not the most pleasant thing to watch. For doing my line art, I use the Kyle Brushes Ultimate Inking Thick and Thin. I believe it's one of the default Photoshop brushes. It's under wet media in the newer versions of Photoshop, but like any good inking brush will do. By the way, how's season 5 treating you guys? So far, I've been loving it. I'm absolutely terrified, but also excited to see where everything goes. Even if Johnny is absolutely going to destroy me emotionally, I await the day of my emotional reckoning. Feel free to talk to me about it and message me. I love screaming about it. I also listened to Penumbra, but I'm only about halfway through season 2 on that right now. And then there's a whole other list of podcasts I saved that I need to get to. All right, I'm going to go finish up this line art and I will be back when I have some flat colors on this very angry archivist. All right, now that Johnny Boy has his flats, I can go straight into adding all of the fun effects. I'm just going to be upfront and say that I use a lot of layers. So this is definitely not the most efficient way to do it but it looks the prettiest. I use this brush called Stone Cutter, but I think that any brush that's hard and cracked like it should work similarly. I'm also just going to quickly add in some nice flush on John's nose, cheeks, and ears to just make him look more alive, even if he is a monster in his own words. Also just highlight his eye bags because somehow this man gets less sleep than I do. So I'm just going to go block in my basic shadows. My three going on four years of art school has taught me that my shadows look best when I shade with purple and set that layer to multiply. So while I currently shade this piece here, how is everybody doing with the current world circumstances? I hope everybody's happy and healthy and just doing okay. I had to wrap up my semester online and being in a 3D animation program that relies very much on heavy computing power, that was not the most fun, but I got through it, so it's fine. Since the semester has ended, I have been devoting much of my time to Animal Crossing when I haven't been working on stupid Magnus Archives animatics. But I plan on making my island this, like, spooky witchy theme. Because I'm very predictable if you've seen my other art on Instagram. <laughs> 
Once that's done, I duplicate those layers, then I grab a blender brush and I just smooth that all out. I only keep one layer on at a time just so I don't confuse myself while working. Once that's done, I turn all of the shadow layers back on and I just kind of mess with their opacity until it looks right. I do this just because I like the texture it gives my art. It makes it look cool. My shadows look kind of flat after all that, so usually I'll go back and I'll add a terminator to my shadow, or I'll just make the part of the shadow where it touches the light even darker. This helps to make the image look even more three-dimensional. And before I move on, I just add in some detail on the hair there. Now I can actually get to one of my favorite parts, adding the halftone dots. The particular brush I use varies the size of the dots with my pen pressure, so it's a fun way to make my image look interesting and add more depth. Once that's done, then I move on to the light. Adding my light is a similar process, though usually it's much fewer layers. I map out where I want my light, duplicate that layer, and smooth it out. But this time I didn't just because I wanted the light in the hair in particular to be a lot more dispersed, so I kind of just went and drew it on a separate layer and then smoothed it out. I just wanted those sharp highlights still, even after it was smoothed out. I set the smooth layer usually to screen at a light opacity, while the hard layer is set to something like overlay or soft light. I also like to add in an overlay brush effect over those areas to help give it a sort of scattered look. I'm also going to add in more patches of light since the hair is going to be doing the whole Ghibli thing and more light is going to come through it. The eye glow is pretty much the same process, I just use the color dodge setting more than screen or overlay. I do use overlay to add some bounce light to John. I just refuse to draw any version of our favorite fear archive without glowy eyes. Especially when he's, you know, about to go full Kill Bill on a monster. If you couldn't tell, I absolutely love Martin Blackwood. And he does have a middle name that starts with K. It stands for King. Bite me on that. <laughs> and then I'm just going to add some dirt all over this boy because him and Martin have to go through at least 14 different fear domains. I kind of doubt that these boys are showering between their domain explorations. I'm recording this literally the night before 169 comes out, so I'm about to date myself real quick. One of them is John's, so even if though this apocalypse is all kind of his domain, I guess. Then one of the last episodes implied that Martin has his own domain. Are we finally going to get an answer for what Martin's an avatar of? Is it, is it the eye? Is it the lonely? Is it the web? Maybe the lonely because he did disappear that one time. Now, the background. I literally had no process in mind when I did this. I was more just experimenting and seeing what looked good and what didn't, so it changes a lot over the course of the video. I just wanted something to be bright and colorful in the background since John and Martin were in the stranger's domain at this point, and I also wanted to contrast John's darker shadows. I know I also wanted a lot of motion in my background because I was playing off that circus, carnival, merry-go-round sort of theme. Though the background and John were still battling a little bit for attention for a while. From this point on, it's mostly just touching up and adding some color effects. I color in John's glasses and I add a little bit of blue bounce light since I thought I was going to keep that part of the background at the time. So, does anyone else think that John went to the London Zoo and rode the merry-go-round because he was depressed after his breakup with Georgie? Anyone? Anyone at all? I also add in these blobs of yellow, magenta, and cyan on their own individual layers, and each layer has its own blending style and level of opacity. I kind of do this just to add some colorful texture. Usually I set my yellow and my magenta to overlay while I set my cyan to multiply. 
Then I'll go to town with gradients and gradient maps until I'm happy with the look. I originally started illustrating like this for an assignment for school. We had it illustrate something based on three words in any style we wanted, so I actually tried to imitate the style used in the concept art of Into the Spider-Verse. If I remember right, our words were chosen at random in a set of about 10, and you had to pick three. I happened to get Vampire, Detective, and Werewolf all in my set of 10, so I just kind of looked at those and I'm like, really? Really, you expect me to not do anything with this? So I drew this, like, graphic, novel -y sort of film noir piece about a werewolf detective and his vampire partner. In, taking place in, like, 1930s New York City. And it was very fun. That piece is still one of my favorite pieces that I have ever done. Then I fell in love with the style, and I've painted like this ever since. Then I add in John's forehead eye at the end because I totally didn't forget it until I was editing this video. If you guys do anything with this tutorial, send it my way and I would love to see it. Or just come scream at me about TMA. If you enjoyed this, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I also post art on both my Instagram and Tumblr at Technicolor Dust. I hope you guys have a lovely day, and I'll see you whenever I post next. Bye!